Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be talking about tools and strategies that I use to remember and retain my lecture notes, my textbooks, any new information that I want to remember long term. This video is a continuation of my last video where I talked about taking notes before and during lecture. This is what you do after. If you're new here, my name is Amon. I'm a student studying computer science and economics. And on this channel, we explore the productivity and study techniques that you can use to achieve your goals faster. Before we begin, I wanna ask you to please hit the like button. It does so much for the channel and helps out the YouTube algorithm when a new video gets posted and it gets a ton of engagement. So please hit that like button. And with that, let's begin. So by this point, you should already have a pretty detailed and dense collection of your own notes concerning all of the different aspects of the topic, from the lecture notes, to the textbooks, to the lecture slides, you should have a consolidated document of everything together. You should also have a pretty good understanding of your notes. You can't be trying to remember stuff long term without actually understanding it first. So if you don't understand it, if you don't have this document, go ahead and watch my last video where I talk about how to take notes and how to understand something for the first time. We're now going to talk about what you do with these notes to actually remember everything long term. There are two universal principles that I originally discovered through productivity and study YouTuber Ali Abdal. They are called active recall and spaced repetition. I've taken these concepts from his videos and reformatted them and adapted them for my own purposes. Basically the idea is one, to revise something you need to actively test yourself on it. You cannot just look through your notes, you cannot just reread the text, you need to somehow find some way to force your brain to conjure up that information. Forcing yourself to use your brain to answer a set of questions is far more effective for memory than just passively engaging with the content. This is why teachers assign you homework and problems to revise the content rather than just telling you casually to reread the notes or reread the text. When your computer science professors assign you weekly programming assignments, this is why they do so. So you are forced to take everything you've learned and put it all to this one task. So that's active recall. Active recall is where you need to actively use your brain to remember something, which will pay dividends over long periods of time for your retention. There is loads of research which supports this concept. I'll link a video down below which goes into it further. Principle two, spaced repetition. You need to do this multiple times over a long period of time for any of this to work out. There's a phenomenon called the forgetting curve, originally discovered in the 1800s by Herman Ebbinghaus. Time is on the x-axis and your retention is on the y. The takeaways from this graph are that your knowledge, regardless of who you are, how smart you are, where you come from, will decay exponentially with time, unless you make the effort to go back in there and revise the content at regular intervals. This literally happens for everyone. And what we can do to help this is interrupt this forgetting curve. As you can see over here, there are many interruptions and the takeaways from these interruptions are that you can see how it decays, but it decays to a higher base level. Meaning that with each repetition, with each practice session, you are going to end up with more overall knowledge. When people do this, their memory tends to decay at a much slower rate and will eventually level off at a certain amount that you're aiming for. When studying, our goal is to get to this level an adequate level for whatever we're going for so that our memory decays and sticks at that level. So those are the two principles. They are active recall and spaced repetition. You regularly test yourself over specific intervals of time. So how do I implement these own principles into my own life, into my own classes, into my own computer science courses and pretty much everything else? If you're here, you should already have a detailed master notes document. So let's actually go through that and I'll show you how I create a test for myself from my master notes for retention. All right, so let's say that I have this master document open. It's about arrays. I basically in the last video went through and created this document from a old Java textbook that I had. I also went through why I did what I did with this document in the last video. So if you're confused, make sure to check that out. So right now let's actually write some questions for testing yourself in the future. What I do is I sequentially go through bullet by bullet and 
take whatever concept is encapsulated in that bullet and write myself a question over it. So let's start with the first one and let's go through the rest and I'll show you exactly how I write these questions. So I've gone ahead and written some questions over here about what is a data structure? What is an array? Is an array a reference type variable or a primitive? How do I declare an array? And how do I allocate memory to a new array? If I was doing this for real, I would definitely go through more notes and write more questions, but for our purposes, this will be fine. So as you can see, my questions are in order of the text. So the first question is about data structures. The first bullet is also about data structures. I have gone through and followed in suite to my text. This is because when you are testing yourself, when you are answering those questions, it makes it a lot easier if you can find the correct answers in order of the questions. I have also experimented with creating my own answers document. So I wouldn't just have the master notes and the questions. I would have a third document, which is called answers where I would write specific answers to my questions, which would really help off the process of testing myself and seeing if I'm right. That's kind of optional though. If you have your master notes, you don't really need an answers document. So yeah, this is basically how I write my questions. I just go sequentially bullet by bullet and make sure to write a question about each point. Then later on, I can test myself by going through my questions over a topic. Some tips about writing your questions. So as you can see right here, I have transferred my questions to a Word document. Any text editor with color is fine. Google Docs, Word, it really doesn't matter. Basically, I move my stuff over here because I wanna be able to change the colors for different things. What I always do is every single time I revise and answer my questions, I make sure to change the color for each question. I will have a whole suite of colors that I will change it to, to signify to my future self that I knew it, I didn't know it, that I was kind of iffy on it. So let's actually do that. So let's say I'm on question one and what is a data structure? Let's say that, okay, I have no idea what a data structure is. What I will always do is I will highlight this question, go into the colors and change it to red. Red signifies wrong. Red means that you didn't know that question. So let's go to the next question now. What is an array? Let's say that, okay, yeah, I know what an array is. It was a pretty well covered concept in lecture. Therefore, I have a pretty good understanding of it. So then I would highlight it, go into the colors and change it to green. Green means good, green means you knew the answer. Let's say I go to number three now, and the question is, is an array a reference type variable or a primitive? Let's say that, okay, I know what reference type variables are, I know what primitives are, but I'm kinda iffy, I kinda get it, I kinda don't, I really don't know which one is right, but I know the question to ask me, I have a pretty decent understanding, I'm just not closing the loop. If it's in the middle of right and wrong, I would label it an orange or a yellow, somewhere in between. So as you can see here, we've picked some odd orange, weird brown color. It really doesn't matter. Anything in between red and green would work. So that's the basis of it. You can pick your own colors or some sort of signaling system so that you let your future self know how you feel about the text, the time you do it, and each time you revise it. So why do we do this? Why do we want to let our future self know how we feel about this? So let's say, 10 days from now, I wanna revise this content. I wanna go through and answer these questions. Except what if I have a thousand questions here and they're all black with no coloring? Now I have absolutely no idea where to start, how I felt in the past. I'm at a loss for anything. And honestly, if I was in that situation, I would probably close my computer and not do the work. But suppose now you have a thousand questions and 10 of them are red, the rest are green or yellow. Okay, if you're busy, you're like, all right, now I can answer just those 10. I know exactly which ones to do. And you're so much more likely to do the work if you have an indicator system. Another tip that I have for writing your questions is make sure to write high quality questions. You want very specific, very niche questions. You don't want these random bloated overall questions, which you know your future self is not going to be able to answer correctly. Your job here is to make the job of your future self as easy as possible. Therefore, if it's really easy, you'll be so much more likely to actually do the work. And that's what we want. That's the biggest struggle, actually getting the motivation to sit down and do this work. All right, so now that you have some questions, they're nicely colored, they're high quality questions, when do you study them? Well, ideally you're doing this for all of your classes, not just computer science, because it truly is the best way to remember anything. So now you're juggling a hundred different subjects and how do you balance all of them? Well, I'm gonna talk about these two methodologies in detail in a future video, 
but for now I will break them down in brief terms. So there's two frameworks for scheduling out your spaced repetitions. The first one is called the prospector revision timetable. This concept goes as follows. Basically at the time of writing your questions, you think to yourself, all right, I'm gonna schedule out a week from today, a month from today. Basically, I'm going to schedule out at the time of writing the questions when I'm going to study them. You are creating a calendar for yourself. You are creating a timetable so that you know exactly when to study. The key part of this is that you are doing it at the time of writing your questions. There's another methodology called the retrospective revision timetable. This methodology is based around this idea that you don't schedule out when you're going to study. Basically, you sit down to study and then you look back into your past. You look retrospectively into your past and you decide, all right, I'm going to study this concept at this time. The difference is that prospective revision, you schedule out. Retrospective revision, you look back and decide. I'm going to break these down in detail in the next video. So if you're confused, you can watch that when it comes out. But basically for now, all you need to know is that you just have to schedule out or figure out some sort of system to remind yourself and let yourself know when you make each spaced repetition. The key takeaway from this is that not only do you need to use active recall, but you also need to spaced repetition. So you need to active recall, you need to practice your questions multiple times over a long period of time. This is paramount. If you don't study over a long period of time, if you don't do repetitions, you will not remember the content. I can promise you that. So that's it for this video. Check out my last video if you would like to know about how I learn new content and check out my future video on creating that prospective and retrospective revision timetable. But before you guys go, I want to please ask you to sign up to Thoughtful Thursday. Thoughtful Thursday is our weekly email newsletter. Every week, my brother and I sit down and write one complete thought. That thought can encompass literally anything, anything that we find interesting or useful for you. One of ours was about ground states as a method for habit change. Another one was about Parkinson's law, just random productivity slash life advice concepts that we believe will be applicable and useful to your own lives. Below that, we will also provide anything else we loved that week, such as TV shows, podcasts, anything that we've enjoyed can go in there. We'll also have a quote of the week and updates on our content and brand. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.